going to see us. Careful. Flying airships have long been a staple of fantasy RPGs, but what Final Fantasy and Skies of Arcadia never fully explained to us were the minute details of piloting one from point to point. But with Stardust Odyssey, we finally get to take full control, level up attacks, and customize the special abilities of our very own airship on a hunt for a priceless artifact. Trying to describe exactly how Stardust Odyssey plays isn't quite as easy as you'd think. You're the pilot of a massive airship, maneuvering through a convoy of other ships. But it's abundantly obvious that you don't belong there. In fact, everyone else in the game would probably consider you the bad guy. And as bad guy extraordinaire, you'll have to have a keen eye to loot passing ships for gold, avoid detection from enemy scout drones, and take down everything in sight if you get spotted. And that's just a simplified version because each of the core nine stages are gigantic. They all look and play pretty much the same with some nice variations in lighting and backgrounds, but each one is hiding a ton of secrets. You'll acquire gold and find plenty of new attacks along the way, with your main objective being to locate and gather ether, as it's the only thing that'll unlock the next stage. There's only a few hidden per level, and frequently you simply won't have the skill needed to unlock the one you find meaning at some point you'll need to return to the stage with your new upgraded airship, which actually brings me to my favorite thing about Stardust Odyssey. It's really challenging, but it's also meant to be, and there's simply no way to progress without replaying earlier levels and doing some serious grinding to purchase some incredibly helpful items from the store. Luckily, Stardust allows you to drop into any completed level at any checkpoint, grab what you need, and drop out immediately after. And if you're like me, you'll spend hours doing this, buying as many upgrades as possible to ensure that the next level is as easy as you can make it. Piloting your ship with two move controllers quickly becomes second nature, and since you're always moving forward through this cylindrical convoy, the controls are somewhat simplified. Just grab the rudder and move your controller forward or backwards to speed up or slow down, and any directional movement will strafe your ship up, down, left, or right. Every other action you can perform comes in the form of spells that litter your dashboard, and with one hand piloting the ship around danger and avoiding attacks, the other will be looting ships, firing weapons, creating temporary shields, or grabbing and shaking backlights, fuzzy purple and black monsters that enter the cockpit when you stray too far from a protective flame. And this is just the tip of a really large iceberg when it comes to Stardust Odyssey. You'll always be wishing you had an extra set of hands to facilitate things, so fortunately the entire campaign is playable in co-op. Having someone sitting there in the passenger seat does make the game way more fun and far less lonely, but do yourself a favor and get the hang of Stardust solo, because there's a lot to learn and it's a little too easy to skip some of the more important lessons when you've got a more experienced friend along for the ride. Regardless of which way you play, the graphics are crisp and clear, and the soundtrack is orchestrated perfectly, giving each level a unique, almost Arabian-style sound. The Stardust developers attempted to add quite a bit of story to the mix, but despite the narrator's best efforts, the gameplay is king here, and the story is quickly forgotten. Just after you gave him the artifact, the alchemist put up a barrier. A sort of magic shield that protects him and stops anyone from being able to get to him. When I step back from playing Stardust Odyssey, I can't help but think that it's just nine similar looking levels where you're doing pretty much the same thing for about 10 hours straight. But when I'm in the driver's seat, dodging laser blasts, hurling spells like my life depends on it, and desperately seeking refuge by a flame to rid my cabin of a flood of bacolites, there's an intensity there that I wouldn't trade for anything. Add to that the hours of grinding and upgrading that made every victory feel twice as rewarding, and Stardust Odyssey becomes a surefire winner for those patient enough to play it. These guardians seem to take shelter in the light of a single blaze ship. Decoy Guardians are very vulnerable to Bacolite. They are often quickly attacked in the dark. When a decoy is infected by a Bacolite, it will no longer react to its environment. It creates the perfect time to raid a few chests that would be difficult to reach. <laughs> 